safe on Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone. So who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hello, everyone. <laughs> what is this? this is, what kind of glasses are these? I've never done this before. Uh-huh. Are these reading glasses? Those are actually yours. These are? Yes, those are yours. What? Wait, do you wear them? I, I did when I couldn't find my other pair of reading glasses. Distance. They're not. Oh, these no, are the reading ones I bought? Those are the you bought. I don't need reading you glasses. Just like, exactly. You just stuck them in the door. Okay, welcome to Stars in the House. Oh. Um, we're going to start. Oh, I was we're, yes, shirt. we're here for the Actors Fund. We'll talk yeah. about the Actors Fund in a minute. And yes, we have a brand new interview with Rob McClure that Seth and I taped just a few hours ago. Mrs. Dudefire. In these very uh, same shirts. And um, but and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but we want to bring on Dr. John LaPook right now at the very beginning. He's our roving outdoor reporter. Yes. He, Dr. He, he has John. a very good reason why he's a roving outdoor reporter, too. One, two, three. Hi, guys. This is yet another of the roving reporter. Uh, events, and uh, there's a great reason why I'm calling an audible here and starting off with me, because today uh, is, uh, well, let me put it this way. The CDC has new guidance about wearing masks, and the reason why you want to follow the CDC's advice is to make it to this age, which is Norman Lear at 99. Today is his 99th birthday. Yay, Norman! Happy birthday! I couldn't appreciate you more. And uh, the moment to say I adore my country and you guys and the opportunity to say happy birthday to myself. Yes. <laughs> happy now birthday. Let's see, am, I, am I framing this right? There we go. That's better. You're framing it perfectly. It's, yeah. So um, I'm going to talk to them about the CDC guidelines. You're going to go into dinner. But this is what the shirt says. 99, I'm aged to perfection. Established 1922. Wow. And on the back is, uh, on the back of the shirt is, yeah, turn around. With it. <laughs> this, this, the back of the shirt, this is Brianna. Of Monty course. The hat. His Classic. signature. Uh, Classic Norman Lear. On, on there? there she is. She's, uh, <laughs> and there she is from the front. Uh, Brianna Lear, who's got a fabulous voice. And uh, oh. speaking of singers. This is, gonna be edited. This is live, baby. This is live, baby. This is live. You remember that? Do you remember live TV? I want you all to know this is what 99 looks like. It's <laughs> the best. It looks great. <laughs> yes, it looks it looks very good on you, Norman Lear. Wow. And, and he knows about live television because when he started, that's what it was, right? Not live uh, television? It was all live television. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Martha Ray, live from New York. Oh, my God. But it was not done on a, on a cell phone, right? It was no. not done on a phone. No. Not no, a, <laughs> not on a cell phone. Couldn't <laughs> dream then of this cell phone existing. Oh my God! Wow. wow well, you look and you sound great. What are you going to have for dinner? What's your big birthday dinner, Norman? I don't know. What are we having for dinner tonight? Lobster. 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 We're having Maine lobster in Vermont, and, <laughs> and we are going to be feasting on this guy. Uh, yes. yes, feasting <laughs> on. <laughs> This guy, I won. I won the father-in-law jackpot. <laughs> I won the son-in-law jackpot. Dinner's ready. We're so, uh, so I'm okay. All right. So we're gonna do this real quick, John. And uh, he'll he'll be going in, and I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a spiel. All right. Yeah. So, with this beautiful backdrop of Vermont, just and the beautiful flagpole. <laughs> Norman is a real patriot. He flew 52 missions in World War II. And uh, I read his book. And you read his book. Everybody should read his book, which is called. Even this I get to experience, right? Experience. Uh, hold on. That's fine. Let's see. Black, what black did hat. I do? There you, we go. We're back. There we go. So uh, um, that was an alarm telling me to, to make sure I don't forget to do this. <laughs> okay, here's what happened today. I get a phone call from Dr. Rochelle Walensky at about 11.30. She's the head of the CDC, and she wanted right. to let me know that they're going to be updating their guidance. Here's what happened. Today, the new guidance is that if, depending upon where you are, depending upon if it's uh, how much how much um, disease, infection is where you are, 
Um, they're recommending wearing a mask, even if you're vaccinated. And here's why, before you say, wait a second, in May, you said, if I'm vaccinated, fully vaccinated, I don't need to wear a mask indoors. Here's what changed. In May, 1% of the infections were from Delta. Wow. Most of it was alpha. And the form was such that even if you were vaccinated, I want to say this carefully, because it's hard to follow. Yeah. If you are vaccinated back then, and you happen to get a breakthrough infection. After all, no vaccine's perfect. 160 million plus people vaccinated, even if it's 95% effective, that's 8 million people, if I did the math right, that are potentially at risk, depending upon their exposure. So back then we knew, we expected there would be breakthroughs. But it looked like at the beginning, it seemed like, according to the early numbers, that if you were vaccinated and got a breakthrough infection, there was so little virus in your nose, that your risk of spreading it to somebody else was very low. So they said, you know what? People want to get back to normal, and we we want to encourage people to get vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, you can go inside without a mask. And in fact, I went inside without a mask on several occasions and ate, and ate at restaurants in New York City. Right Now we get to July 27th, 2021. It's changed. <laughs> 83% of the new cases are Delta, not 1%. And it turns out that the amount of virus in the nose and the nasopharynx of people who are vaccinated and get a breakthrough infection is the same. It's about the same as people who are unvaccinated and get a, and get an infection. Mm. So that you are probably just as likely to, or potentially just as likely to infect somebody else if you're vaccinated and get infected as if you were unvaccinated and got infected. Yep. That changes everything because now... And again, they're saying it depends where you are. If you're in an area where there's a lot of disease and you can go to the uh, CDC's uh, Google CDC COVID uh, data track, uh, tracker um, and you can see a map of the United States, if it's red or orange, that's an area with really so much COVID in that area that they the recommendation is to wear a mask going indoors. The analogy was like wearing like having a rain. I mean, one one analogy. She didn't use this. But somebody else has said it's like having an umbrella. And if you are in an area of the world where there's just a little bit of a drizzle and you have an umbrella, you probably won't get wet. If you go out in a hurricane, you're going to get wet. So the equivalent of the hurricane is you go in an area with a ton of COVID where not many people are vaccinated, like in the southeast right now. Uh, and in that scenario, even if you're vaccinated, um, you want to be super careful. Now, that may mean going indoors with a mask. It may mean not going indoors at all. Um, and, um, especially if you're somebody who is living with somebody or you're in contact with somebody who's a vulnerable, immunocompromised, younger than 12, so that you can't get, they can't get vaccinated right. elderly. These are the things that we have to think about. Now she was very human, Rochelle Walensky at the end of the press conference today. And I loved her coming back. They were about to end it. And she said, can I just say one more thing? I don't take this decision lightly. She said, I know everybody's fed up with, with COVID. We all want to go back to our lives. And now you're vaccinated and you thought you could go back to doing things. And now it's being yanked away from you. And it is enormously frustrating. And she's exactly right. But remember what we've talked about all along with science and data. If the data change, the scientists, the, the health professionals, the public health people, they tell you their best recommendations based on the data at this moment. If the data changes, then your recommendations can change. You don't double down because you're embarrassed to say, to say here are the new recommendations because it's different than what I said before. New data, the new data is that Delta is much more infectious than the variety of the, the variant of, of COVID, SARS-CoV-2, that was here in May when they made the recommendations to go, that was okay to go indoors without a mask if you're vaccinated. That's change. We're changing the recommendation. And I, she said that she spoke with all these experts, scientists, immunologists, virologists, health professionals, and uh, people who are in public health. They all said that they agreed, given the new data, these are the new recommendations. So I think that's what we want. It's a tough decision. She's getting a lot of you know, people on social media saying, what are you doing? You're changing your mind. Yes, please change your mind if the <laughs> data changes. Okay, John, two quick questions, because I know we want you to all to get in there for the celebration dinner with Norman. So one is regarding the, the viral load, if you get infected and you're fully vaccinated, is the viral load the same if you're asymptomatic versus symptomatic? 
We don't know that yet. The, 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 the studies are going on right now. And in fact, all this new data is unpublished. It's based on surveys that are being done right now. So I don't I, I can't drill down to if you're uh, if you're asymptomatic. Great question. Sophisticated. Is that from one of our audience members? It's from me. It's from you. Very sophisticated question. So and I think right now we have to assume, yes, that it's that it's you still can okay. infect somebody else, even if you're asymptomatic. So. OK, so on a practical level, then, John, I'll tell you, I, without outing anyone, Seth and I were somewhere this past weekend and we did receive an email yesterday saying that someone who was fully vaccinated inside a house, inside a house, we're all together. Um, we wore masks. We wore masks, of course, ah. um, you know, did was found to be positive, which means they probably because it was literally the day before probably tested. They were probably positive when they walked in the door. In that case, would you recommend, is it recommended that everyone get tested or only people that are symptomatic? Well, right now, the recommendations, I believe you still go to the go to the CDC website, but sure. I don't think they've changed yet. It was that if you're fully vaccinated and you're exposed, you don't need to get tested. But yeah. moving target, right? It's yeah. changing. So you guys are, are were masked. Well done. OK, I think you're at way, way less risk being right. fully vaccinated and masked um, than somebody who was not masked. And next to them, I think for those people, you've got to, oh, I hate to say this, I but know. just off the top of my head, it's a two to 14 day incubation period. And I think you have to be careful about that. It's We don't have official recommendation yet. We don't have an official recommendation about that. That hasn't changed, uh, nor has the outdoor recommendation changed. Right. Although, you know, I think if you're, if you're elbow to elbow with somebody who you, who you don't know outdoors, it's not the smartest thing right now. Right. Uh, so I think it's back to being very careful. And I know emotionally, how hard is this, right? Because we talked about this the other day. During the, the heart of the uh, pandemic, we kind of knew what to do. Stay home, yeah. hunker down, don't don't go out, stay away from each other. Now it's what if I'm this, what if I'm that? What's, what's the weather like where I am? How many people are vaccinated? How much disease is there? It's, 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 really it's really tough one advice they said they still want schools to open right. they're recommending that everybody get vaccinated <laughs> certainly teachers and everybody should wear masks um so they still want to encourage though in school in person uh schooling because the the you know it, it's it's a real problem uh emotionally and educationally every other way uh, right. for, for kids to be away from school so real quick for a practical for practical advice, what is cons for people that don't want to wear the masks for whatever reason and they're fully vaccinated and they're in an area like we are where the caseload is low, what is that magic number where it's like cases per 100,000? Yeah, I, you know, I, I knew that uh, it's 50 to 100 is like orange per 100,000 over seven days. I think greater than 100,000 is red, but, but double check me on that. Okay. Um, on, hold on a second, actually. Um, the uh, John Brooks from the CDC emailed me this. Um, I'm going to disappear so I can look at okay. my thing. And I'm still talking to you. Yes, and we hear you. Brooks. Okay. He said, uh, okay, here it is. It's... Um, there's high and there's substantial. Mm -hmm. So high is, where is it? Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, substantial transmission is 50 to uh, to 100, 99.99 cases per 100,000 in in the past seven days. High is greater than or equal to 100 cases per 100,000 in the past seven days. Moderate is only 10 to 50 and low is zero to 10. So okay. um, that's that. And then he might as well, as long as I'm here, uh, yeah. give you some more stuff from, from the CDC. If you're vaccinated, um, you have... Uh, three to 3.5 times less risk of infection, seven to eight times less risk of hospitalization, and 20 to 25 times less risk uh, uh, for death. So the bottom line here is the vaccines are still highly effective, highly right. effective against protecting 
against um, severe illness, hospitalization, and death. But the problem is you could now be, here's summing it up. If you're in an area of, you know, this high or substantial infection, you go out, you're fully vaccinated, you get infected, you don't know it, or you have mild symptoms, you think you have a cold, you can infect somebody who is vulnerable, immunocompromised, right. under 12, elderly, and that's the problem. That's the problem. And you yourself are still very well protected against severe illness. But we're worried now about the community. And I know, look, this is a time where we finish up with this thought, okay, that I know that there's a misconception. Uh, people think, okay, I have the right not to be vaccinated. I'm talking about somebody who can be vaccinated, not somebody who, for whatever health reasons, can't be. But there are people you've heard over and over again, I have the right to do what I want. And if I get vac- if I get the COVID, it's a risk to me. And if I die, that's the risk that I'm taking. But I think I'm going to be fine. Here's the fallacy. What you just said is true, but you are a human Petri dish. And even if you're fine, even if you have no symptoms, it's multiplying in you. And when it's multiplying in you thousands and thousands and millions of times, you have the risk of creating a mutant strain uh. that's even more dangerous than the current uh, variety than Delta, more resistant to the vaccines potentially, although the vaccines right now are holding up very well against severe illness. And so you can infect somebody else without knowing it, and then it can end up af- affecting other people. So we, do, do we really want to learn the entire Greek alphabet? Do we want to go all the way up to, you know, Omega and beyond? No. No. And, and it, unless we vaccinate everyone, not just in the United States, but in the world, it's going to keep having more and more mutations. And the risk is, and Francis Collins told me this in March when we did our 60-minute piece, piece about variants, which I encourage people to search for and look, because we go over all this. And at the end of it, I said, what keeps you up at night? And he said, what keeps me up at night is a variant of concern that get, is, so, is so dangerous that it's resistant to our vaccines. We're not there yet. The vaccines still work. So everybody get vaccinated. All right. Thank you, John, for taking the time out. Thank and thank Norman and the entire family for for uh, letting you join us for for this period of time. It was really needed. All right, guys. Take care. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. All right. I think uh, didn't necessarily want to hear that, but I think we needed to hear that. So um, thank you, um, Seth, because we had John on right away. For those who may not know that we are here for the Actors Fund and tonight is an encore presentation of um, some cast members from Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, but, with an, uh, but, uh, but with an update today from Rob McClure. Yes, we have a, a wonderful, we love Rob. It was a wonderful, it was wonderful to see him. And so we talked with him, which we're going to air first, but we are here for the Actress Fund. If you're able, we are going to, by the way, so during the Olympics, we're going to be doing encore, we're going to be doing encore Broadway shows this week that you may have missed when we did them a year ago. And next week is going to be TV reunions that maybe you had missed also, most of which were from last year, except for Grey's Anatomy and Love Boat. The others were from all early in the show. And we're going to, for most of these, have um, interviews. Um, I know that Stephanie J. Block is going to join us on Saturday. Elizabeth Stanley for Jagged Little Pill will be here on Friday. Um, So uh, we have more um, people, Kevin Chamberlain, when we have Jesse next week. So stay tuned for that. And um, yes, Seth, go ahead. Before we go, um, did you say how to donate? I don't, I no, I haven't done that, that yet. I was about to so, say that. So oh, okay. Ahead. I was going to say you donated starsinthehouse.com or you text fund2020 to 56512. Then you forward your donation to donations at starsinthehouse.com. And we already have some. So it's going to be one oh, or the other. That's so great. Okay, go, Seth. Seattle Suzy Q, one of our regular amazing people. She is donating in honor of the fabulous Rob McClure. Was oh. lucky to have won a Zoom meeting with him last fall for the Roundabout Theater. He is a real mensch. He is. We love I look him. forward to seeing Mrs. Doubtfire in November when I spend a whole week in New York going to theater. Oh. Thank you, Seattle, this. Suzy Q. Love it. Okay. Hi, my name is Ryan from New Jersey, and I'm donating to the cast and crew of Mrs. Doubtfire on Broadway. Um, how, how do you pronounce her her last name? Jen Gambatis. Jen, it's exactly how it how it looks, right? Jen Gambatis is literally. It's been over a year since Jen has been on our show, so forgive me for uh, for that. Jen Gambatis is literally. Well, he would have known my favorite actress of all time. When I saw School of Rock for my birthday, I saw her, and I when I went to the stage door, I missed 
getting my picture with her until I saw her walking back to the theater with her lunch. And I asked her for a picture. She, of course, said yes. And she said that she wanted it to be the best picture. So she set up the picture in front of Times Square with a ball in the view. And she said she wanted it to be picture perfect. That's so sweet. She inspires me to do theater and I will be a fan for life. I can see why. I can't wait to be back to Broadway to see this fabulous show. $25 donated to the Actors Fund. So Jane Gambatese is a difficult name. However, Tig is like, really, dear? <laughs> well, that's, well, well, Tig, you've been with us uh, for a while. Jen, that's true. Jane Gambatese has been literally 13 months. Been, and the I last longer, name, it looks longer. like 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 Gambatessa. That, that, yes, and I didn't want to mess it up. Exactly. Gambatese. Um, but yes, we are. Um, oh. Ha ha. <laughs> So what we always say, right, yes, right. the Actors Fund is only for wealthy Broadway people to keep themselves in Mink because Mink is so expensive over COVID. Um, I think one of the things, because we talked to Rob, I don't know if we said this in it, and so Seth, if I'm about to say something that's in the interview, stop me. But um, Rob said the kids are coming back. Did we did we talk about it, that on the, or was um, that afterward? Yes, we talked about it actually after. I was too scared to ask. So you know, Miss yeah. Outfire is about a family with young kids. And as soon as Barbara shut down, I actually was talking to James and I was like, I'm devastated for those kids because kids basically have six month contracts on Broadway because they always age out of Broadway shows. And I knew Miss Sapphire was going to be closed for a while. And I was like, this is so sad. And I, Christine wanted to bring it up on the radio. I was like, don't mention it because they're going to be listening. They're going to be devastated. Anyway, the end of the story is after the interview, I said to Rob, I said, who would you play in the kids? And he's like, all the kids are coming back. And I was like, but they're a year and a half older. And he's like, they're literally coming back. He's like, if they need to change the script, the writers are prepared to write it in if they need to. But they that they felt because the show was literally about family that that would be a horrific thing to do to these kids who they had only done three previews yeah. on Broadway. Like and one moved from up. Florida to New York, right. and then and like three previews later, out of a job. So they want them to have that experience. Isn't so, it great? So now is really fantastic. He's got three kids in their mid thirties, and it's kind of. <laughs> It'll work. Because well, as, as Rob told us, again, this is after the interview, after what you're about to see, he said, well, uh, we we grew a year older, so the kids did too. Yeah, he's so like, we all look like, a year, a year all and a half. A year, a year and a half, I guess, by the time they uh, began. So here's some Rob McClure. Uh, feel free to keep um, donating, and we'll read your donations the when they come in. Tomorrow's show, and tomorrow's show is um, the fan, the fan, yeah, that, that, was, that may have been the first time that we had sort of a themed show by right? one character with all different people so tomorrow are the phantoms it's norm lewis you panero ramin karam lou did i say norm already yes you did norm like you oh howard of course howard the McGillan, running of course phantoms. yes and then we had a special visit from a christine of course sierra Bogus. right it's such a great show so that's yes, going to be and i think tomorrow. they're singing on it that's gonna be tomorrow and we're gonna have yeah. a live interview before too um, but for right now, David, take it away first with the um, with the interview that Seth and I just did hours ago with Rob, followed by the encore of Mrs. Deathfire. And Joey Pisano, very sweet comment I see over there. Thank you, Joey. All right, we're going to see you all tomorrow, but you're going to love, just stay, you're going to love this. this. We just interviewed Rob this minute, like, yeah. really recently. All right, enjoy, hit it. Rob McClure, thank you Hi, for coming friend. back. It's are my pleasure. A, thank you. B, are you in Philadelphia? I am still in Philadelphia until um, September 1, and then I'll be up your way a lot more often. Is that because you're going to be starting rehearsals? Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cross fingers, knock on wood. Oh, wait, I don't right. understand. I thought you were like, I loved you in Broadway and living in Philadelphia. Why? Well, why? I, totally, I totally do. But uh, most of the time, what I'll do is I'll get like a short term lease up there for rehearsals, uh, previews, like rehearsal tech previews. And then once we're up and running and I'm not there all day, every day, then I go back to the commute. So, so Rob, so we had Mrs. Doubtfire, I just looked, we had Mrs. Doubtfire on, if you can believe it, 15 months ago in April of 2020. Um, when it still we, was not happening. <laughs> right. Re, remind, I know it's going to be, because uh, David edited the show, um, so I know it's going to be mentioned in the show, but just remind me. How how many previews have you done of Mrs. Doubtfire when everything shut down? I'm going to say three. Three. Oh, right. Bullseye. Bullseye. Yeah, three. We had done our entire out-of-town tryout at the Fifth Avenue in Seattle. Super, super exciting. Came in. Rehearsal. Uh, tech. I, the momentum was thrilling. And then we did the first preview. And it was like, I, I was, ex the whole company was ecstatic. And then the afternoon of our second preview, we heard that there was a positive test case in New York, and the new thing was that the people were not going to stage door. 
That was what we heard on our second preview. Wow. And then we did our third preview and the afternoon of March 12th uh, was it. So three previews and uh, and done. But we're thrill it, thrilled that uh, our team has committed to us coming back and that we have finally have dates. And uh, I, I'm elated to reunite with our show family because I miss them. And when is your first preview? October 21st. We open December 5th. Wait a minute, aren't no. you just like, please put my understudy on for all the rehearsals and tech rehearsals? <laughs> no, no, I am not. No, I, no, I'm not. I genuinely, I, I, I am going to need, I'm going to need the stamina rebuild for sure. Okay. Um, and, uh, and my dressers, um, get, because we were just starting to hit uh, our, our groove in terms of these quick changes. I, I change in and out of uh, Dalfire almost 30 times. Um, the, the, <laughs> The, the longest I have to do it is about 90 seconds. The shortest I have is 18 seconds. And we were just sort of finding our rhythm, me and the team of four who makes them happen. Um, and I know that we're going to have to get that back in our bodies before we even have a prayer. And I also know that the writers have been taking this time to change things. So I'm wow. excited to see what it is. I don't know. Um, I, I'm eager to see what they've done in this time because I know they were excited to have it. It was one of those horrible things where you literally had a re-audition, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I, I no, I'm. <laughs> could you imagine? Uh, yes. We want to make sure you still got it. I'm like, ah, me too. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Rob, was there anything that during uh, quarantine that you indulged in? I don't know, food wise, drink wise, that you're like, okay, I'm going back into show mode, and I cannot yeah. eat such and such anymore. Cigarettes. Literally, my family and I just took a little break and went down down to the Jersey Shore, and we got back. And that was the day, this past Monday, uh, we got home and I was like, okay, no more. You know, if, if Sadie gets the ice cream truck, I get the ice cream truck. Yeah. If he gets mac and cheese, I get mac and cheese. I'm like, not anymore, Nutrisystem. Like, let's get back on the ball. What about working out? Are you doing home gym? Are you doing group gym? Are you doing yoga? I, I'm no yoga here, but I am doing, <laughs> but I am going to the gym and getting my cardio back because I know that uh, stamina is going to be a big thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of treadmilling with a Scottish accent in my head, just trying to get back into the groove. Well, that's what Marissa did. That's where I learned that trick for hairspray. She would run on the treadmill and sing the entire score. Mm -hmm. Do you actually yeah. do that? Yeah, I know if I, you know, if I can, if I can sing it when my heart rate's at 122, then I know I'll be okay. <laughs> And I'm curious in terms of the costume changes. I remember like Santino, I think he wore like ass padding as like the guy in Tootsie. So we could have ass padding. Is, or, do you have like some little trick in your body? No, no. no. Luckily, it's uh, um, it's all when it's me, it's all me. And when it's Dalfire, it's all Dalfire. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have to, there's nothing I have to do to myself to prep for when I'm Dalfire, luckily. Wow. Rob, it, this is a bit on the deeper side. But there's been so much, obviously, that's gone on in the world, your life, our lives, um, since you last were on that stage playing this role. Um, is there something that you can think of, of how your life has changed that you know just inevitably you're going to be bringing to the character? For sure. I mean, I've never been like a method uh, person who's like, you know, in order to play this kind of person, you have to have had this kind of experience. I, I I believe you can use your imagination, but um, I do believe that in a show that is all about um, the lengths with which, to which you'll go to be with people you care about. Um, I know that when I get back in, and you know how it is, you know, you, you adopt the culture of whatever show you're in, you know, um, and, and Doubtfire's cult, the culture of that show is family, 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 what we would do for our family, for those that we love, whether that's biological family or chosen family, how far would you go, um, to, to be with them? And I know that the energy in that first meet and greet back, it, that's going to have a new resonance for us that the, the, um, and, and, chosen family you know what i mean how important it is to be around those you choose to define as your family um and what that can be and what that can look like and i know that oh, and, and the time i've spent with sadie um you know i've become i, I now i now have 
almost two years more fatherhood under my belt uh, mm-hmm. and what that means and what that and and uh, and the, the daily questions she throws up at me. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I know that I have a deeper understanding of what it means to be a dad. I have a deeper understanding of what it means to be a parent and, and, and I have a deeper understanding of what it means to miss the people that I love. And uh, man, that's our show is like it's what it's all about. Wow. Oh, so exciting. Um, all right, so wait, when did rehearsals begin? You tell me, but what was it? September 20th, we go back into the room. October 21st is first preview, December 5th. Uh, I'm so excited to see everybody. I'm so excited to see everybody. Uh, well, we can't wait to see you and your cast in Mrs. Doubtfire this fall. Thanks. Yes. Congrats, Rob. And we're going to watch uh, what you guys were like right after the shutdown. We're going to yes. see that right now. Wow. Um, all right, say hello to the fam. Bye, Rob. Cool. I love you both. Thank you. The point is, we have um, Jen Gambatis. Where's Jen? Hi, Jen. Hi. I feel like I just ran into you in a restaurant. And we were talking about you doing Mrs. Doubtfire. What was oh, that? you know where we were? We were seeing Forbidden Broadway. Restaurant, right? Restaurant. Yeah. Theater. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm sorry. I'm going to have to commit to this. It really should be Scarpacci. Is it Scarpacci? It is Scarpacci. Oh, and where is she? And Annalise? Annalise Scarpacci. Oh, I'm Scarpacci. Sure. And technically, I should. <laughs> Technically, I should be Gambateza, but yeah. I'm from Cleveland. So, <laughs> so you said it right. Yeah, because Laura Benetti always says, I should be Laura Benanti, but I'm from New Jersey. I don't know why people can't commit to their original Italian pronunciations. Anyway, here's <laughs> Annalise Scarpacci. Yeah, yeah. my girl. Hi. 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 And here's the most. You got on the first try. What'd you say? You got my name on the first try. Well, I um, studied classical music. I had to learn Italian. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to talk about me right now. Um, anyway, the most non-ethnic last name, please welcome Rob <laughs> Smith McClure. <laughs> Hi, Robbie. Oh, you're frozen again. Oh, I never know if you're frozen. No, I'm here. I'm here, and, and Robert McClure is Scottish. It has a pronunciation. Okay, and on that note, I'm leaving you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I can show us on screen as that. Okay, so where is everyone broadcasting from? Jane Gambatis, where are you? I am in my home in Hastings on Hudson, up in Westchester. Oh, pretty. I love that you have your full, I've done voiceovers in my time, microphone in front of you. <laughs> I've done voiceover auditions a lot and a handful. <laughs> Just saying. And Annalise, where are you, in uh, in Rome? Um, I'm in Staten Island, so same thing. <laughs> <laughs> little 718 action. And Rob McClure, are yeah. you in your signature philadelphia I am. Can you hear me, hear and see me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. I just, before we start, can I just say for anyone watching what you and James are doing right now is so unbelievably special. And it's also really, really hard. I know that like, I don't know if people at home think like, let's turn on our webcam and just like chat the amount of organization it takes for you guys to constantly be staying ahead of two show days every day, recruiting all of these people to come together, figure out their Wi-Fi situation, figure out how to get them on this thing, what they're going to sing, how they're going to sing it, doing sound checks before you come on the. You guys have on more than a full-time job for free for charity that you've done every day. For, uh, how many shows now? Sixty something. 60. It is an extraordinary feat. I, I have done a small percentage of the things that you guys have done, and it's a huge pain in the butt to set all of this up and try and make this happen. So doing it twice a day, every day, is astounding, and we, the entire performing arts community, owes you guys a huge debt for this. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Rob make me cry. That's really Rob, sweet. That's sweet, and it, it helps. We have some incredible people that are say, we, with we, us. We definitely could not do this alone. We have like a little volunteer team. And everyone like does their like cog in the wheel part. So it, at first it was overwhelming, but now everyone sort of does something, and it's gotten much easier. It's still overwhelming, but so, it's gotten much easier. <laughs> but you know what though? It's it's interesting, Rob, because it's like because we've been asked that quite a bit of like you know you can just do an eight show week, you know, and and what I what I tell them and Seth tells them is that this also really helps us. You know, because oh, sir, you're making me cry, Rob, mm-hmm. um, because we get to connect with amazing artists every day, twice a day. And it makes us feel like we're able to contribute something. We don't we we're not doctors. We're not nurses mm-hmm. We're we don't work in the grocery stores. We don't deliver mail. All those frontline heroes. That's not us. But this is what we can do. And and thanks to incredible people that help make it happen to you guys saying yes for us sending you social media stuff literally probably an hour before you <laughs> came on the air all those last minute things you know everyone just is what's what's been wonderful is that everyone just gets it 
you know, and if like, okay, the lighting goes out or the sound goes out or you have to pop in, pop out. Everyone has been so wonderful that it lifts us. And if we didn't do this, we, I'm a news junkie. I'd be watching the news all day and I would get less sleep than I get now and be more depressed and more anxious. Yeah. So, but I, I really I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate but you saying that. It's and an amazing thing. And then I think, uh, you know, any technical difficulty just proves to all of us how much theater is essential and we need to be in person again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look at it. Absolutely. So, so speaking of, of, well, just like what's going on, like how, how are you guys uh, doing? I mean, emotionally, physically, like what are you doing to keep your spirits up and physically, like what's, how you, how are you doing? Jen, I'll start, we'll start with you. Okay. Well, kind of just what you said, James, like trying to be of service in small ways is keeping me going. So um, I teach my, I have a four-year-old and an almost 11-year-old in a couple of weeks. <laughs> wow. And um, so I'm, I'm homeschooling or distance learning, <laughs> advising <laughs> right, right. the fifth grader. And then, but the fourth grader, I started to teach her little class uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 to 1030. And I do um, singing and storytelling because that's what I do. Yeah. And, um, and that ha I feel exactly the same way that you do that. It's, 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 it is a service, but it's just as much for me. It may be more, maybe more. Right. <laughs> when you say singing, are you doing appropriate stuff or like Marie Christine? <laughs> <laughs> they would respond to me Christine what I have found to be the most effective we have like a little like routine now so I pick the story I'm going to do ahead of time and then I go googling and I find so like let's say um well I okay I was thinking was I telling this to you Rob I think I was emailing it to Wayne Kirk Kirkpatrick our composer I've been working on the railroad is that not the best song of all time? It's got this like verse and then like these like three hooks. You've got someone in the kitchen with, with, with Dinah. You got Dinah blowing her horn. Then someone's in the kitchen. Then Fee Fi Fiddly I.O. It's like such a great song. <laughs> you know, you reminded me. I used to be obsessed with that song when I was a little kid. Yeah, I forgot all about it. It's like such a great song. So I was like, oh, I want to teach them. I've been working on the railroad. So then I picked a, a book from our bookshelf that like corresponded to. We did actually the Little Red Lighthouse and the Great Grey Bridge because it's got mm -hmm. the workers in it. So like I, I give them little movements, but then that was like Monday. Then Wednesday, we changed the words. We changed the words to be <laughs> the planets. So we were like, um, so my very educated mother just served us noodles and pie. That's the nine planets in order. Now I know it. <laughs> Perfect. Mercury, my very educated mother just served me nine pickles. Oh, we do noodles and pie because I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then we get to Fee Fi Fiddly IO and we're like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn just served us U Uranus, Uranus, <laughs> Neptune. And then they're so cute when they go Pluto. <laughs> and those are the nine planets because um, Pluto is considered a planet again. See, I'm learning. I'm learning Jen, still. Jen, you can try and teach them Uranus. That's not going to last. <laughs> Rob, you're correct. And Jen, you got to work on your scansion. You can't put a seven syllable word in a Thank one you. note, but it's all good. But you, I know. Thank you. I know. Thank you. How would you have broken it up? We'll do it offline. Well, exactly. uh, okay, Annalise, yeah. try, to, try to top that. How are you staying healthy? <laughs> um, I mean, I can try to top it. My mom has me in boot camp every morning oh. um, doing Billy Blanks. So, <laughs> you I know, that. Is, I mean, we're having a good time. So, uh, yeah, we're doing that every morning. And then I play guitar and read and talk to my friends and family. Um, it, I'm lucky that my cousins live next door. So we're able to talk through the fence. Oh, that's so, so nice. How old are you? Are you 19 or 20? How old are you? I'm 20. Cause you know, we have a 19 year old and we kind of feel like that whole generation is having a little bit of a breakdown about the social distancing. How are your friends dealing? Yeah. Um, it's mixed. I mean, we're very lucky that we have FaceTime. So I've been calling my friends a lot. A lot of people who, cause I would have been a junior at Pace University this year. So I have people who are in school and everybody's taking it very differently. Yeah. And my best friend is a nursing student at Adelphi and they're getting creamed with work. So it's, it's a lot, especially when with school, everybody is giving more work because they're home. 
Wow. It's also, I feel like probably it's for everyone, but I think especially like the 18 to 25 year old range that it's, it's different every day, every hour, just the emotions, because it just seems like yeah. for, for people your age and that age range, it's like you were just about to start. Well, I mean, obviously you were just about to do your show, That's it. but I mean, yeah. but I mean, just whether you're just graduating from high school or college or a new job, it's, it's something that we, we can't even imagine being, you know, older. So. Yeah, our life just seems paused, but I think when you're about to start a new life, it's really frustrating because you were so excited to begin the new life. Whereas we're in the middle of our typical life, we're like, oh, we're just pausing for a minute. Yeah, that and the fact that for all of us, everyone says, and I think right, rightfully so, that A, we don't know what it's gonna be like afterward, but what we do know is it's gonna be different. And at least us growing up, we had an idea of what the world would be. And of course it changed, but we still had an idea. Now all of us are sort of like, what is gonna, what's it gonna be like? And we don't know. And I would think it's especially hard. So it's like, I, I so it sounds so corny, like my hat's off to, to yeah, your generation, exactly. but it's true because it's a, it's a lot. And at least, like you said, at least you have FaceTime and you have other things, but it, it's gotta be really difficult, I would think. Yeah, the first couple of days was very, very hard because I had just moved into my first apartment and I was ready and we were starting. And then that whole day on the 12th, I, I mean, I don't know if the two of you can remember, I literally was sobbing the entire time. Yeah. And I, I, my anxiety was through the roof. And then my mom came and she said, okay, we're gonna take you home. And I <laughs> mm. And I was with Maria who is in our ensemble and she's 18. Oh. And she's from Ohio and we, she had to go home and the thought of not seeing her every day mm. and not being in my apartment every day with her was a lot for me to take in in one day. So it was a lot. But now I'm doing much better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I, I didn't think about that, being in your first new apartment, having moved back with your parents. Oh, vey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, McClure, how you, you got a baby to focus on constantly, right? Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. You know, I know that, uh, for what it's you know for what it's worth in this craziness i know i'll look back on this time and be grateful to have spent so much time with the kiddo um in like such a developmental time in her life um it sucks at you know at what cost but it's um i know it's a weird thing right now you know if we're constantly trying to balance the idea of like make the most of this time we suddenly have time right and also recognizing that it's there's a global pandemic happening so there's like there are days where i feel like i'm like you know what i'm gonna write I, I want to write that thing that I want to be want. I'm right. going to make the most. I, I, and then the next day you're like, I think I, I need to just be still. I think I need to be still and recognize that I'm in my house because there's something horrible happening outside of it and um, be grateful for my health and, uh, and dance for Nick Cordero every day at six o'clock. Yes. And for anybody who doesn't know Nick Cordero. Yeah. About that. yeah uh, Nick Cordero, who is a big old Broadway star and a friend to a lot of us is really struggling now. Uh, COVID-19 has, has uh, really wiped him. And uh, he just actually had to have his right leg amputated um, because he was having trouble with blood flow. And he's been out uh, for for quite a while now. And his wife, Amanda Klutz, who is, um, who is on, uh, you can follow on Instagram, uh, she is doing like daily dance parties to his music to try and wake him up. Um, so follow his wife, Amanda, on Instagram and you can help support what's going on with Nick because uh, we're trying to wake him up um, and because he's really struggling. It's, I just want to make sure I'm spelling this yeah, right. She's I, writing it out I here, follow so. her, but of course, I never really thought about how she spells your name. Is this yeah, right? Amanda, Amanda K-L-O-O-T-S. Right. We'll correct it right now. K-L-O-O-T-S. Yeah, she's got such an amazing spirit, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, And three friends of hers started a GoFundMe for them because uh, when he wakes up, I'm believing he will. Uh, his life is going to be drastically different, and they're going to need some help. So three of the friends... Uh, created a GoFundMe. I'm sure you could find it online. Yes, yeah, um, post it. If you go to if you go to my Facebook, any it's like posted everywhere. Everyone's been posting they, it. They have a 10 month old kiddo named Elvis and uh they, they need him. So send as much prayers, love, dance party as you can their way. They need help. I love that you're doing that. Um all right so we have these videos that you know we didn't get a chance to sound check them so we're gonna just assume that they work. This looks like this is, is the, this the montage. I think this is, is like it? the montage. Let's okay. take a look And 
now the star of Mrs. Doubtfire the Musical, Mrs. Euphigenia Doubtfire. I screwed up everything, didn't I? That was expensive, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm the most obsessed with, are you wearing an actual, like, um, what's it called, muffin top? <laughs> I have a whole bodysuit on. Uh, it completely changes the shape of my whole body, but a muffin top is included in that body shape. <laughs> well, I'm really glad. As I was asking you, I got mortified because here's just a little story about me. I'm going to relate it back to me. And James knows this. When I did the Ritz on Broadway, um, there was a number at the end of Act Two where I had to do magic to do and I was in a unitard. It was supposed to be a talent show. Anyway, it was really funny. <laughs> After the show, I won't say who it was, but um, a big boy star came up to me and she was like, how did you get all those roles like, like around your midsection? And I was like, that's like, that's like my fat stomach. And she's like, no, like they added it, right? I'm like, no, it's like my fat stomach. It's like, it's like love handles. And then she was like, no, because look, you're not fat at all. And she kept poking and she wasn't fat. What she was poking was my rib where there's no possible fat. I go, right, there's no fat there. That's a bone. The fat you're talking, it was the most mortifying. So as I said, the muffin top, I'm like, oh my God, what if Rob really has a horrible layer of fat? By the end of this quarantine, I might. I know, I need Annalise's mom's boot camp. I know, because <laughs> we do the Peloton, but I, I want to do this boot camp. How long is it, 45 or 60? Well, he has like different ones. If you go on his YouTube, it's Billy Blanks. And then he has like 30 minute ones, and then he has 10 minute ones. He's it's amazing. Tybo, right? Yes. And yes. I used, like when I was little, like two years old, my mom used to do them all the time. And I used to like, there's videos of me doing them with her. And now I'm like actually doing them and they kill a lot. I worked with his son, Billy Blanks Jr. I did fame yeah. over in Europe with him. So, and he's very fit, so. <laughs> oh and Gavin Creel. Well, let's go back to that video. So that's the Mrs. Doubtfire promo. So people that are watching, they're like, wait, what's happening? So Mrs. <laughs> Doubtfire is a musical. It's written by the guys that wrote Something Rotten. It was in previews. You actually began performances. It's so interesting. Every Broadway show has been in a different right. stage. Like we just finished Tech or Opening Night 6, or we just opened and got great reviews. Every show is different. So you guys had begun on Broadway. You you knew what the audience feedback was like, and then it got extended. So by the way, what was the audience feedback like? What was it like doing it on Broadway? It was thrilling. I mean, we we um, we had our out-of-town tryout at the Fifth Avenue in Seattle, and we broke all of their box office records. It was so exciting. Yes, and, Queen. And people were really upset you know, um, uh, because they were so excited for the Broadway opening and we got three previews in um, and the audiences were astoundingly, you know, you start to feel, feel the momentum. There's lots of tearful people at the stage door going like, oh my God, you know, they forget how moving that story is. It's mm -hmm. funny. Everyone knows it's funny, but it's profoundly moving and what they've done to the script and the, and the adapt adaptation from the movie to make it fit for now is so good. And uh, so it was like getting the rug pulled out from under us, but we're lucky that we're one of the shows that will be back. We will be back. Well, James, talk about what you were asking before is, you know, about, you know, did people know in advance? Oh yeah. So <clears throat> when, you won when was your first preview? March 9th? That's right. Yes. So <laughs> at that point they had already stopped backstage tours. So like, did you have any sense, like when you had your first preview and you were getting that audience reaction in the back of your mind, like, how long are we going to be able to do this? Yes. Yeah, I did too. Um, I live in Westchester, so I'm not far from New Rochelle, which was like that first hot spot. And when we were in tech, uh, my kid's school closed down for two days for like a deep cleaning because one of the parents was at that bar mitzvah in New Rochelle where a lot of people got sick. So I was very keyed into it. And um, yeah, there was a sense, I would say, when you guys at the theater of like, even in the three previews that we had, uh, like that last one was not as many people as there would have been. Oh, know? interesting. You yeah. start, but like, did you think to yourselves, we're literally going to stop? Like, did you ever think we're going to actually stop production? Or do you think, oh, something weird, we're going to cut down audience size? Like, what did you think was going to happen? It was I was in La La Land, honestly. I'll admit it. I was not paying attention to what was happening. And my mom kept calling me, she's like, you have to wash your hands. And I'm like, I'm washing them as much as I can. And I I guess that day, that's why it hit me so hard right. because I never in a million years thought that this was gonna happen. Right. So 
I, that was the last thing in my mind. Which is where you're, she's supposed to be, right? You're 20. You're opening like your first big role on Broadway. First big, big role. You're, you're a vet. But, um, you know, as parents and as old people um, <laughs> and as like I was tracking it. Do you guys remember um, on Valentine's Day when I gave the cast? <laughs> I gave hand sanitizer to the cast. You did. <laughs> In February. <laughs> because, and it was, I was kind of just like, I don't know. I was just tracking it. I'm such a mom, you know? So, uh, so my reaction was the opposite. I was relieved. I did think we were going to close down. I had no idea for, you know, how indefinite and how long it would be. But for me on March 12th, I felt like I could finally breathe again wow. for a few days. Cause I brought in a suitcase and taken it to my friend's apartment. Cause I was afraid like, what if they stop the Metro North? What if I can't get home? You know? So when I walked in my house on Thursday, that Thursday night, I was like, finally like, okay, you know, yeah. That was like James. Weird. Was like, what do you no, say? I was just gonna say it's also weird because as theater people, we're wired for the show must go on, right? We're yeah. we are wired for people need this. People need the escape. People need uh, the collective human experience. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through. I mean, you're talking about an industry that bounced back in 48 hours from 9/11. I mean, right. we are wired to to get back to what we do and provide that relief and comfort and joy for audiences. So it was weird to have a to have something come up against the theater community that we needed to step back for. It's it. so and unprecedented. And Annalise, I can't stop thinking, you got that new apartment. Do you still have to pay the rent? Yes, I do. Oh, oh honey. That's, yeah. what, that's what we're going through. We're upstate right now. Yeah, you better bot mine, Rob. You better bot mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all alone. I feel bad. I miss my couch. <laughs> but okay, I don't feel yeah. that bad for you. But I hear you about the couch. I mean, yeah, we we have an apartment in New York now, and we tried to be like, can we get a rent reduction? And she was like, yeah, no. I mean, and I think you're, people are letting you're me. the first person since this started to say they missed their couch. I know it's very specific. <laughs> And it doesn't really bring up a lot of emotions in me, but I, I hear you. I understand. Well, this, look at this person who just commented. It's very sweet. I was at the last preview, and yes, not as crowded as I thought it would be. Wonderful and beautiful. Oh, that's sweet. Rob is a man crush Monday. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. He's, yeah. Rob is everybody's Broadway crush. Everybody's. <laughs> Why only on Mondays are you allowed to have same sex? All right, we'll alliteration, talk about alliteration. Alliteration. Oh, okay. Women have it on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it packs me. I think we have like this. We have a, another clip. Is this a clip of rehearsal stuff? I think. We, oh, have a, my, we have a shot of him getting. Does that sound right? I think it's the thing I put together on the first day. On the first day, I wore the full prosthetics, oh, and we showed it. We showed it to the cast. We didn't tell them, and we just like invited people into the other rehearsal studio. Um, and this is their reaction to seeing oh, the old. Okay. <laughs> and to clarify, you have an added muffin top. <laughs> Let me bring up. Let me sure. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. they're, they're called jowls and we all have them at this age you've got you've got I have no idea because my face is so beautiful you've got I can't it is hard Seth to be next to her what do you mean? Rob did you have a video camera implanted in your face because how did you yeah. get all those weird shots uh, that was actually the um uh, one of the, the assistant makeup designer who was standing beside me filming 
Um, it was just fun, and it was just something for us because we thought it was going to be fun and cute. And then I realized they had this really cool footage, and all they did such a good job of building momentum for the audience to finally see what she was going to look like that I thought that would be a fun little. T I put you know did that on iMovie on my phone just the night before they were going to release that uh, actual Entertainment Weekly photo. Oh, wow. um, so it was all about building. But what's so funny is all these people were like, you guys waited so long and, and it was so great to tease what she was going to look like. It was also simultaneously us figuring it out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like We didn't want to release it until it was perfect. So all of the press of not showing my face was to A, build momentum and B, because we hadn't quite mastered it yet. So we had to wait until it was perfect. Was it, is it hard to sing and talk in it? A little bit, a little bit. It's it's really, they've done an amazing job though. Um, when I went into the place to get to get with the process you just saw, um, I walked in and they were uh, they were like, oh, hang on, let we just we just have to clear off this table. And they were building the penguin prosthetics for Colin Farrell in the new Batman movie. And I was like, oh, I'm in the right place. I'm in. The right place. <laughs> um, so. So they did an, and as I sat down in the chair behind me on the wall was the life cast of Robin Williams that they had done oh. because that company um, did his Teddy Roosevelt prosthetics for the night at the museum movies. But I, I thought it was just such a lovely sign that he was is. above me. Um, it was. But is it the kind of thing where like, we're going to put a straw in your nose? To be, like, I think, I don't think I'd be able oh. to do it. I think I'd have a panic attack. I, I didn't, but I understand how people could. Absolutely. There's a moment where it's hardening and you've been in there for 35 minutes. Wow. And, uh, I, I with your, and, and for me, it was like uh, eyes open um, in a smile. <laughs> I can't even yeah. do, um, I can't even do a facial where they put the facial on and it makes it a little tight. It freaks I'm here. me out. Ooh. So I won't be replacing about you. Say, I was about to say that. No one asked you to. <laughs> all right. Um, so, Anna, I know you guys have all prepared to say Yeah, I just kept right. thinking it's going to be worth it. Well, no one's interested in me. <laughs> Annalise, what are you going to haul out for us? I have a little bit of what the hell. Um, I have a special guest. Ah, the beanie. <laughs> That's her oh, angsty teen beanie. I can't sing the song without wearing a beanie. Um, I have to do it. And because I usually <laughs> sing this song with my siblings, uh, Jake Ryan, Flynn, and Avery Sell, and I know you're both watching, I love you both. Um, but yeah, so we have some help, and I have my beanie. So here's what the hell. Can't you see what's happening here? Mom has made dad disappear and found someone that she thinks can replace him. And like it or not, we're gonna share the house with a creepy old lady in a hideous blouse who's gonna move in and slowly she'll erase him. Well, this was not supposed to happen. This is just a bunch of crap. And no one asked if I would go along. All at once, the adult is stroking. Now I'm a kid in a home that's broken. Cause they can't fix all that they did wrong. So this is my life. Isn't this just great? Isn't this just swell? What the hell? Yeah? Well, the grown ups aren't supposed to act like children. So the way I see it, all bets are off. Maybe it's the same, maybe I'm to blame. If I hadn't had a party, my grades were a If a part for me, would they still be together? What if it's me who made this mess? I should have spelled out. No, it's all them. They're the issue, her and him. And don't it piss you off? I think that we should all rebel. If this is our life, doesn't it make you want to scream and yell? What the hell? Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Right? Oh, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? 
What the hell? What the hell? See what's different here on the wall. All the pictures with dad. She replaced them all. It's just us and her. Not five, but four. Does it mean we're not a family anymore? This was not supposed to happen. This is just a bunch of crap. And I don't think that this is fair at all. There's no way mom is seeing this through and letting some woman who smells like stew come in here and tell us what to do. She knows it won't end well. What the hell? Yay. <laughs> well, I agree with this. Rob looks so proud. <laughs> Second of all, I love the hideous blouse reference, but you're wearing prosthetics. How do you also add the stench of stew? That's my question. <laughs> it's from Daniel trying to make them dinner and it not going well. Okay. <laughs> Still know why it has to get on your body. We'll talk about that privately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that the kids sang with you. Yeah. yeah. I miss them so much. I, it really is like, you know, oh, you know, every, not every show like takes on the 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 cult they adopt the culture of the show they're in you know how like you know a college will do hair for two weeks and at the end of it they're like i'm a free or love person <laughs> oh, no, <you laughs> but like our show the culture of our show is family and i think we so take it on and I miss you guys, like my family, like my kids, man. Like you and and uh, Jake and Avery. I just and Jen. I miss you guys so much. You sound amazing. I'm mad at you for like being able to sing like that from out of nowhere. Oh, well, you can tell her voice is natural, good placement, and it's annoying. Um, <laughs> then Gamb you know, it's like I was just born with perfect. Um, <laughs> then Gambatis, what are you hauling out for us? Is it I've been working on the Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But I'm glad you did the newer spelling, which I went down a, wick, a rabbit hole. It was like in the 80s because we know why they went that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So my song um, is called Let Go. And um, I, I have the task of being sort of the, I, I won't call myself the villain in the show, but I am, you know, the opposite to our hero. So I'm the anti-hero. Let's just say if you've seen Sound of Music, the character is the Baroness. Continue. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's that ish vibe but anyways this song's called let go and um and i'm i'm singing it to uh mrs doubtfire because she's asking me if daniel was really that bad and and he really wasn't that bad he he wasn't he was great in a lot of ways so i'm gonna take this out and here we go <clears throat> let's start soon Once we went together so well, same beat of a heart. Somewhere we just started to drift apart. Used to, we could talk through the night, but that all went away. Somehow we just ran out of things to say. Tired of the tears, but chained to the fears of being on my own. The days turn to years together, but alone. Sometimes love tries to conquer all the pain, but even so, Sometimes love can't win No matter how you fight somehow You know And it's harder to hold on than to 
let go. So you just let go. Felt like I was starting to break. No room left to bend. I knew that I no longer could pretend. Could I really just walk away? Or should I persevere? I knew if I did, I would disappear. But still I stayed for the vow we made and I tried to soldier on. I did what I did for the sake of the kids, hoping love would prevail and that I wouldn't fail. But sometimes love tries to conquer all the pain, but even so, sometimes love can't win. No matter how you fight, somehow you know. And it's harder to hold on than to let go. So you just let go. Just let go. <laughs> Thanks, friends. I love you. I miss you. I love you too. Love you. Rob, you're on stage during that number normally. I'm looking into her eyes for most of it oh. as Mrs. Doubtfire, which is like best seat in the house. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice you guys have this little way to reconnect again. Yes, and before I before you have me sing, I have to feed this cat or else he's going to meow through the entire oh, thing. baby. <laughs> oh, sweetie well, pie. I, okay, so then I, well, I could do my little, I could start my test. Yeah. So, Go you know, it. I always do this thing where I say, um, you know, you memorize shows and then time goes by and suddenly your brain goes, I don't need to have this memorized anymore. And I'm sort of curious when that is. So, mm -hmm. Annalise, didn't you do, who did you play in Les Mis? Les Mis. I didn't do Les Mis. I literally I got was at, at a Wagner production, a high school production of Les Mis. Yeah, you did Les Mis. When I, yes, when I was in sixth grade. Exactly. <laughs> Where did you play? Oh, I was little cassette. <laughs> I love your denial. I never did it. I just did I it. Did it. <laughs> it was not full professional, right? Yeah, it wasn't Broadway, so she wasn't paid. She wasn't paid. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Aren't any floors for me to sweep? Not in my castle on a cloud. There is a room that's full of. <laughs> Okay, the only reason why okay, the only reason why this is easy for you is because you're basically eleven year old right now. So like it was just two years ago. Those of us that are our age, do you remember a show from when we were in sixth grade it was a long time ago? You're remembering like ten minutes ago, so I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Oi. And I'm gonna fail. I also, I also um, no, I've never done that show. There is a <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I never was able to hit that last note because I was so small. And when I was younger, I couldn't hit low notes. And I'd just be like, oh. That's my favorite. Wait, that is my favorite. Like when I teach, I have so many students who will want to sing a song and they go like this. The wizard and <laughs> And it's always just like air. There's no. Uh, all the time. And still sometimes. 
But by the way, Annalise, you remember full lyrics and full blocking. That was <laughs> impressive. Yeah. I'm going to move on. Now look who she had, the little madam herself, pretending once again she's been so awfully good. Oh, good. I was obsessed with that part. But I, mean, yeah. I was obsessed with that. Me <laughs> too. Uh, <laughs> Frank, what That's is it? anniversary concert. That cast killed it. Wait, I had Evelyn Barron when we did it on Broadway. Ten Rotten Franks from other Better not me catch you slacking. Better not catch my arm. So good. What is that going to buy? Yes. Yes. What's that going to buy? Now yeah. take that bell. Yeah. My little, my I, this is probably giving the letter writer, Crystal, I like know, her best life. <laughs> yes, Rob. All right, so Jen. Oh, God, I'm going to fail. Okay. Maybe. There we go. I'll give you the very beginning. This is the show you start in. One night with you is what all that I'm praying for. I never remember words. No, I don't know. Listen, when it's done, it's done. <laughs> One night with you is all that I'm praying for. The yeah. things. The things, the things that, that no, nah, we two could share. Plan. Plan. <laughs> Would make my dreams come true. B minus, if that. Yeah. Oh, no. That's a full D. Okay, thank you. That's, no, listen. I'm real about it. I used to kind of remember things, and then I had kids. And, yeah. yeah, they drag all the folders to the trash. Yeah, that was from we, that was from all shook up. People don't remember. Rob. Uh oh. Oh lord. Oh no. Here it goes. Act one places, please. Your calls, Miss Ali, Miss Ashton, Miss Lejeune, Mr. Fellows, Miss Blair. Act one places, please. Oh, uh, uh. Oh God, is it, are you doing noises off? Yes, love. Oh God. Uh, act one places. Uh, um, uh. uh uh, the play, the play will begin <laughs> wait, uh, at any moment. That that line is that we're and doing. Maybe Act One places is what we'll get. What do you think? Oh my God! You're doing text. There's not even a melody. That's correct. <laughs> you had it memorized at one point. Yeah. Well, I and maybe Act One places is what we'll get. What was it? Yes. I don't remember. I oh, Johnny will pull this stuff together. Now we've called places. Now she knows she's got to be on stage in five minutes, won't she? <laughs> Will she? Very good. Is that you, right? know what, you know what Daddy's like. We've only been on the road. Oh, we've only been on the road for, for uh, what was it, seven, no, two weeks. Keep going. Uh, and, and already she's locked the door and is yelling at people. What was it? It was Andrea Martin locked in her dressing room. I yes. remember that. If only she'd speak. If only she'd speak. Will she? Won't she? What was well, now it? You're doing, now you're doing both roles. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna have to give you, I think, a Jen Gambati score. No, no, listen, that I, I, I being, he didn't have melody. Well, being expected to just do text from, from a play, that that's cruel. But um, I will say, getting to do that cast with that, uh, getting to do that show with that cast was, I should remember every line because it was dreams come true. Oh my god! And Dream, you were hilarious. Me and Tracy Chimo did that scene. Yeah, it was very good when I saw it originally. Not not today. Um, all right, in conclusion, <laughs> gotta be honest. So, Robbie, what are you gonna haul out for us? There better be oh. a muffin top involved. Um, it it is uh, um, it's a song that Daniel sings uh, in court when he's losing custody of his kids called "I Want to Be There." Um, and today, as I was just like home reviewing the lyrics because clearly I need to, um, uh, I was struck by how much these lyrics uh, apply in more ways than I want them to at the moment. <clears throat> I love you guys. This is I Annalise, love you. Annalise, Jake, and Avery, my 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 stage kiddos. <laughs> Lydia's young still, but she's old enough to start going down all the pathways of love. Some will be easy, but some will be tough. Time she'll be swimming in oceans of anguish. At times she'll be dancing on air. 
Through all of her highs and her lows, I want to be there. Natalie's something, a beautiful child. A head full of wonder, a heart full of wild. And man, she can light up a room with her smile. How could I go through a day and not see that? In what world would that ever be fair? All I know is any world she inhabits, I want to be there. So tell me. What should I do here? Tell me, what should I not? Cause I'll do whatever it takes to hold on. They're all that I am. They're all that I've got. Chris <laughs> is a pistol, <laughs> barrels of fun. The bond that we're forming has only begun. He needs his father. And I need my son. Don't take away all my reasons for living. It's more than I think I could bear. So look beyond any misgiving. You'll see there's a father who cares. Trying to make it all last. They grow up so fast. And I need to, I've got to, I want to be there. Please, let me be there. I miss you guys. Love you. <clears throat> well, here's the nice, I just got a text. What a pleasure to watch my poppets from Jerry Zacks. Oh, <laughs> now I'll really cry. I know. <laughs> I miss that guy so much. I really do. <laughs> We're doing all the songs with like the gigantic bleeding hearts, but I promise you the show is so funny. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just, those numbers are hard to do here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what is I think they represent what makes that story sing. And that's, that's uh, I think for any good adaptation, people are like, why? Why adapt Mrs. Doubtfire? That's why, because underneath that farce is a family drama and it's, it really does, it sings beautifully. And I think those are examples of like what the writers have tapped into that really warrants song from that story. Yeah, without without heart, it just becomes like a Saturday Night Live sketch. You have to have heart. That's it, that's it. It's got a reason to sing. So I'm going to be one of those people that's like, so when are you guys coming back? Anyway, there's no, I can't say people ask me, like, there's no way to know. Just don't worry about it. It'll happen one day and bug off. It'll be fine. Although I agree with this comment. Um, where is it? I need a cash recording ASAP. <laughs> oh. Maybe if we do, maybe if the technician is like in the booth and we record one, one at a time on the other side of the glass, we can go in and record it. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, but yeah. I would be like, um, I'm so excited to come back because I feel like theater is going to be more important than ever. And when I, when I think about the energy when Broadway curtains rise again, it is going to be the most exciting. I, I just, to, to have that to look forward to gets me through every single day because I know it's gonna happen. It is going to happen that we will be back. And when we will, people will be more reminded than ever as to why they need it and why uh, it's important. And I'm thrilled that it's this show um, because it, 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 it's a hug. It's a gigantic hug, a really funny hug. Well, guys, if you want theater to last, it would be nice if everyone watching donated a little something to Stars in the House, but just helping all the arts. And Rob, you have a question. How do you make your voice sound like a woman? Ah, um, you know what's so funny is I didn't, um, my, my grandmother on my dad's side, uh, my dad is um, McClure is a Scottish name. My grandmother on my dad's side had a brogue. She was Scottish and actually had a little brogue. Um, so I started with the actual like Scottish accent and less about like, I'm going to 
to have a falsetto like a lady. I think that's less interesting. And if she's an elderly woman, it, it wouldn't be pitched quite so high. Right. Um, so for me, it was more about um, uh, less talking like, you know, silly and more like the warmth of the brogue. It's just a little, it's just a wee bit of that warmth. I think warmth is more important than gender. Uh, so I'm, I, I think the warmth and the, the, uh, the ethnicity and the warmth, I think, are really the, the main ingredients to it. And we all hear Robin Williams in our head, right, don't we? Like, I feel like it's important to let the audience know that I'm a big a, as big a fan of that sound as they are and that I'm going to take care of it. I should do like a show with probably actors that have based things on their grandmothers because Audra said she couldn't figure out how to do Lady Day until she realized that her grandmother was always like, oh, girl, you better come in here for lunch. Uh, and when she was like, oh, that's my grandmother's voice. It's interesting. I should do like a four, four square. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it was it somewhere in our DNA and we just have to unlock it. Yeah, I should also do a dedicated to Muffin Top show with you, me, and a couple of <laughs> Oh, you know, when you were telling that story, Seth, it made me think of Reefer Madness. We all had to wear um, flesh-colored unitars. I remember that moment. Flesh-colored. For everybody on that stage, I was like, that's really revealing. <laughs> It, and I was like not that far from Annalise's age and it was still not a fun moment. And then there were like cannabis leaves. <laughs> and then when I turned around, it was very like <laughs> flesh colored unitards. The show is no longer running. Okay, what else? Oh. <laughs> Jen and Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. This has been, this has been a delightful <laughs> afternoon and touching and funny and warm. And I'm so happy all of you came. Yeah, it's so great. So Mrs. Doubtfire is coming back. We can't get it. We can't, you know, you can look online. You can find like fun. There's an Instagram for Mrs. Doubtfire, right? You can look. Yeah. 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 Doubtfire Broadway. Yeah. And um, tonight we have the TV cast of Difficult People. So a lot of hilarious people. Yeah. Okay. And then tomorrow afternoon, speaking of reunions, we have the cast of You're in Town coming in. The oh. Fun. Nancy Opal and all those clowns. Wait, in the same theater. Yes. That's yeah, right. before, before yeah. it was renovated. Yeah. Right. Nancy Opal. Yeah. This is an infuriating story that you can ask her about. She, we did Honeymoon in Vegas together and what? she sings an unbelievable song called Never Get Married where she like blows the roof off. The, yes, just mask for days. And uh, you can ask her about this. Jason Robert Brown, he had the recording studio we were recording, uh, the cast album, and he they started at 8.30 in the morning. And Jason Robert Brown was like, well, who who is gonna, no one can, Nancy Opal. Nancy Opal rolled out of bed at 8.37, walked up, and what you hear on the album is at like 8.50 in the morning. I'm so mad at Nancy Opal. That is so funny. <laughs> she oh. is a beast. She is a beast. And I used to go to the, it was then the Henry Miller Theater when she was doing You're in Town because I babysat Jillian back in the day. Oh, her wow. beautiful model daughter. I was her babysitter for a wow. period. We're all connected. New yeah. York telephone. Yeah. Anybody grew up in the eighties? <laughs> um, all right. So if you want to play us out oh, for yeah. the uh, closing credits. Um. Yes. What, do you think? Um, what are gotta you gonna play? Go we gotta I pick guess I'll do. I'll pressure's I'll on. Miss you guys. guys. This is for Annalise. I love you, Annalise. <laughs> 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 Perfection. Perfection. President of CNO, Joan Benesca, Chairman of the Board, Director of Commerce, Director of Commerce. No. no. Brian Dratch, Alexander Tom Greenwald, featuring Seth Ramsey, Dave Wilson, and Dr. John LaPook. Paul Castry. Yes, Paul. Jake Perlman, Stephen Spadaro, and the company contributed to Stein Allen. 